This video is being sponsored by Brevity. From the dawn of time, man has been in search for one thing, the truth. When the Sony FX30 was first released, there were a lot of voices proclaiming its greatness. But under it all, I had a burning question that I had to have answered. How does it compare to the Sony a7 IV? Every camera that makes its way to the marketplace needs a baseline to better understand its value. We achieve this baseline by comparing it to what we already know or have so that we can get the information that we need. Purchasing a camera is always a big decision. Most of us get to do it once every few years or once in a lifetime, so we want to make sure that we're making the right decision. I wanted to make this comparison video to share with you my findings of both of these cameras in a side-by-side -side usability and real-world situations so that you have the information that you need to establish a baseline. We are going to talk about basic specs, but I really want this video to be geared more towards usability and what you might use either of these cameras for. We're gonna cover the similarities and differences and which camera is right for you. I'm Joe, this is the Film Alliance, and we are about to establish a baseline. I used both cameras extensively to really test out their usability and what feel I had while I was shooting with them. I shot with the cine lens, an anamorphic lens, I did some macro shooting, some slow motion, low light shots, some product photography, street photography, and nature photography. And I also was able to catch some of that golden hour. For a majority of the time, I shot with the Sony FE 20mm f1.8 G lens on the FX30 and the 35mm f1.4 Zeiss lens on the a7 IV. This way I had similar focal lengths. There's a 30% price difference between these two cameras, and although the prices will change, I predict there will always be about a 30% gap difference in price. Both these cameras have many similarities, and that's one reason why I was keen to get my hands on both of them, to see which camera is better for who. Both cameras shoot oversampled to 4K, the FX30 shoots 6K oversampled to 4K, and the a7 IV shoots 7K oversampled to 4K. The FX30 has a dual base ISO, one at 800 and one at 2500, and there's no advertised dual base ISO for the a7 IV. But from my research, I found that 800 and 2500 may be your best bet. It's important to know which ISO your camera performs the best at, especially when you're shooting in low light. Even when I'm shooting in bright daylight, I'll still leave my ISO on the FX30 at 800 and I'll just throw an ND filter on my lens. This way I know I'm maximizing the dynamic range out of the camera. I did the same with the a7 IV and predominantly shot in ISO 800. Both cameras can use full frame lenses and APS-C lenses. Even though the FX30 is an APS-C sensor and the a7 IV is a full frame, the a7 IV features a crop mode, which allows you to put APS-C lenses on the full frame a7 IV. And I was able to do this and I went out and shot and barely saw any vignetting in the crop mode of the a7 IV, which makes the a7 IV even more desirable camera. Normally, when I compare an APS-C camera and a full-frame camera, I would recommend going with the APS-C camera if you're on a budget for lenses, because APS-C lenses are a lot cheaper. But the a7 IV pretty much takes that variable out of the equation. Now, if you use a full-frame lens on the APS-C FX30, you do have to multiply the focal length by 1.5. So if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, that's really the equivalent of 75 millimeters. But another thing people sometimes forget about is you also have to multiply the aperture by 1.5. So if you're shooting on a lens that's f2.0, it becomes f3.5 at its lowest aperture once you throw the full frame lens on the APS-C. But before we get any further, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Brevity, for sending me out a backpack and having me test it out and have the privilege of being able to use it out in the field to see how I liked it. I've never had a camera bag with so many slots, pockets, and openings and places to put things. I had my old camera bag for over two years and it was starting to fall apart and I was just used to opening it up and seeing everything there. But now that I started to use this bag, I understand the charm to it because now I have a place for everything. Instead of just having one small area to put everything with some slots in it, 
Not to mention, you can tell this bag is well made from its stitching to the material they used. They did not give me any talking points. They literally just sent me the bag and said, if you like it, then mention it in one of your videos. So just look at everything that you can pack into this bag and how organized it is. My favorite feature is that little side pocket where you can easily reach in and grab for something without having to put your bag on the ground, open it up, and then search for whatever you're looking for. If you're in the market for a new camera bag, then I highly recommend the Brevity Gear Bag. I will leave this one in the description and I hope you go check them out. Now back to the camera comparison. Let's talk about rolling shutter. The FX30 has a faster sensor readout, so it's gonna be better for sports, driving shots, and I find that vlog shots are really where you start to see that rolling shutter or that jitter in the background. So the FX30 will have less rolling shutter, however, when you put the a7 IV into crop mode, the rolling shutter is actually slightly better. So if you put the a7 IV into Super 35 mode or crop mode, Yes, it will crop in, but you won't have as bad of rolling shutter as you do with the FX30. And if you're into shooting photography, the a7 IV has a mechanical shutter that can shoot in 10 frames per second, which will greatly reduce the amount of rolling shutter that you get when you're shooting moving objects. So that to me is a huge benefit when it comes to shooting photography with both of these cameras. Speaking about photography, the FX30 does not have an EVF where the a7 IV does. And this is a great benefit to not only photographers, but also filmmakers and videographers first because you can actually put your eye up to the screen without having that glare from the sunlight. I use the EVF all the time on my A7S III when I'm out shooting in the field and I wish the FX30 had it, but it is a cinema camera. The EVF is 3.69 million dots, which means you're gonna have a beautiful looking image when you look inside of it. The FX30 has a 26 megapixel sensor and the a7 IV has a 33 megapixel sensor, so you're going to get more resolution out of your images with the a7 IV, which makes sense because it is built to be a hybrid camera and it has that full frame sensor. And the FX30 does not have a stack sensor, but the FX30 can shoot in 4K 120, whereas the a7 IV can only shoot in 4K 60. But when you're shooting in 4K 120 on the FX30, you're gonna have a 1.6 times crop. And when you're shooting in 60 frames per second on the a7 IV, you'll have a 1.5 times crop. Most of the time when I'm shooting B-roll for client work, I'll shoot that in 60 frames per second on the FX30 and I don't have to deal with any crop. And when you're shooting in 4K 60 on both of these cameras, there's really no difference in the frame at all. And if you shoot in 1080 120 on the a7 IV, then there won't be any crop. The advertised dynamic range out of the FX30 is 14 stops and the a7 IV is 13 stops. Now, when I was out shooting, I didn't see a difference between the two like I would be if I was shooting with the ZV-E10 or the ZV-1. They both have sensor shift, five axis stabilization. I did not notice a difference when I was shooting handheld or when I was shooting on a gimbal. The FX30 can externally record 16-bit RAW through HDMI and the A7 IV can record at 10-bit RAW via HDMI. So for those of you who are recording higher level productions and you need that extra detail for masking and VFX, then I would externally record from the FX30 to the Ninja 5. You can load LUTs into the FX30 so you can see what your image looks like and it makes it a lot easier to expose for so you don't have any surprises when you get to post and the a7 IV at this point in time, you cannot load any LUTs to it. So you're kind of shooting blindly, but I turned on gamma assist and that's all I really needed. The FX30 is a cinema camera, so it has five mounting points, whereas the a7 IV really doesn't have any mounting points except for the quarter mount screw on the bottom. With that being said, I would still get a cage for both cameras so I have a little bit more room to play where I wanna put my attachments and my accessories, especially if I'm building out a rig. They both have dual memory card slots, although the a7 IV only has place for one CF Express card, whereas the FX30 has a spot for two. The FX30 also has a cooling fan, which makes it nice on longer shoots, although it does make a little bit of noise, so you have to think about that when you're in a quiet environment and you're trying to record some really clean audio. The A7 IV has a passive cooling system, and I have heard of people claiming that the A7 IV overheats once you shoot a long time out in the direct sunlight. But I believe if you're in a studio setting like this and you open up the display, then you should be fine. Also, the FX30 has time code, which is super important if you're shooting with multiple cameras or you're doing higher level production work. The FX30 gets a lot of hate because it is an APS-C sensor, but let's not forget that the Aria Alexa also is a Super 35 sensor. And Airy understands how important dynamic range is, so if Super 35 is good enough for Airy, then it's good enough for me. As you probably already know, the FX30 was geared more towards filmmakers and cinematographers, whereas the a7 IV was created more for hybrid shooters, people who like to do video, 
and photography. So if you're into only video, then I would say go with the FX30 because that's gonna be future-proof and there's a lot more places on the camera itself for you to mount accessories to build out your rigs. But if you do weddings and real estate and photography and YouTube primarily, then I would go with the a7 IV simply because there are so many great features on the a7 IV. I do think it's probably one of the greatest cameras that Sony has ever made. A lot of the times when I was shooting with the a7 IV, I thought I was shooting with my a7S III because the image coming out of it looked almost identical. All the buttons were the same. I almost sent the a7S III back to lens rentals by mistake because they look so similar. So if you were to ask me which one of these two cameras is better, I would ask you, well, what are you shooting it for and what do you want your future to be? If you wanna get more into cinematography, storytelling and filmmaking, then I would go with the FX30. But if you're using a camera to go out and get some nice photography and also video at the same time, and you have a YouTube channel, then I would go with the a7 IV. I hope this video answered all of the questions that you had between these two cameras. And if it did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so that we can grow together in this filmmaking space. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance. Thanks for watching and have a nice week. How does it compare to the Sony A7 IV? A7 IV? Yep, seriously? <laughs>